Intimate relationships offer beautiful experiences and many benefits, but let's be honest, they can also be tricky, especially when you and your partner have different priorities. Misaligned and conflicting priorities lead to frustration and misunderstandings. Not because the differences are irreconcilable, but because the underlying needs and emotions behind them aren't fully expressed or understood. What if I told you that some of the best relationship experts like the Gottmans and Esther Perel offer simple, actionable advice to help you navigate and align conflicting priorities without losing your identity? In today's video, I'll break it down for you. It will be fun, so let's go! As with so many things in life, the first step is communication. John Gottman emphasizes the importance of open, respectful dialogue, while Esther Perel highlights listening with curiosity. Open, respectful, and curious communication sets the stage for discussions, possible compromise, and collaboration. Instead of seeing different priorities as roadblocks, you approach them as opportunities to deepen your connection and understanding of each other. This not only aligns your goals, priorities, but also strengthens your partnership overall. But here's the kicker. Not all problems are created equal, and understanding the difference can save you lots of heartache. According to John Gottman, about 69% of relationship conflicts are perpetual problems. These are rooted in fundamental differences in personality, values, or life goals, things that probably won't go away. Meanwhile, solvable problems are situational and can be addressed with clear communication and compromise. Here are two examples of perpetual problems. For example, you want to live in the city, your partner wants to live in the countryside. If you live in the city, your partner constantly complains. If you live in the countryside, you constantly complain. Either way, one of you will be complaining and feeling like they sacrificed their own dreams and it will come out in all kinds of situations. One of you, here's another example, one of you is a planner. The other one prefers spontaneity. Every time you go on a trip, one is ready and organized, the other packs at the last minute and inevitably forgets things. You argue over what to do on your vacation as a spontaneous partner always seems to disagree with the carefully crafted plan by their organized planner partner. The spontaneous partner feels restricted. The planner feels unappreciated for all the effort they've put in. So you fight during your vacation. You can't change your partner, but you can definitely change how you see their behavior and not take it personally if you focus on empathy and understanding. You could say, I know we may never fully agree on where to live, but let's find ways to make wherever we are feel like home for both of us. Then you go about asking each other why they prefer one or the other setting what will make you feel better, and go from there. You may end up with a place in the city with a bigger yard, lots of trees that are close to the edge of the city and close to nature. Or you may end up living in the city and buying a cabin in the woods, where one of you likes to hang out more than the other. Or at least rent one for vacations. There are definitely options, and you can figure them out if you focus on understanding each other's needs empathizing, you're trying to figure out where each one is coming from. As for the spontaneous versus planner example, starting out the same way, asking each other why one likes to plan and why the other prefers spontaneity, you can understand where each one is coming from. I've always been a planner and most people are nowhere near in comparison to me, but I know that I like to plan my vacations or life for that matter because I get extra mileage from the experience. When I plan a vacation, I learn more about the place and enjoy the anticipation of getting there. However, I never insist that my plan should be executed to the T. I stay open to suggestions from my partner and leave lots of free time to accommodate last minute ideas 
and new opportunities we may run into. I see these as enhancements to the trip. And if my partner forgets to pack something because he did it last minute, oh well, natural consequences. <laughs> it's his problem, not mine. <laughs> he can get whatever he needs along the way. Think of perpetual problems kind of like the inevitability of seasons. You can't change nature to always have a nice late spring, early summer weather. Sunny, pleasant, green, and fun. It rains, it snows, and the wind blows. That's part of the experience of living on Earth. You don't argue, you just get an umbrella, good jackets, boots, and whatever you need to get through the parts of the year that are not your favorite. Because being alive on Earth is still better than some other alternatives. Then there are the solvable problems. For example, you want to save money this month, but your partner wants to go on a weekend getaway. For these situations, you start out the same way, communicating why one matters to one person and the other to the other person. By disclosing to each other what is important to you both, you may find out that you have similar priorities. Perhaps one wants to save money because your house has a leaky roof or your kid needs braces. It's likely that you both want the same thing, if not entirely, then to a certain degree. Perhaps the other wants to have a weekend getaway because they feel like the two of you need some quality time together. Chances are you could come on board with that too. Then it becomes a question of how to kill two birds with one stone. Perhaps you have a day away from the kids to get the quality time you want and save money because you didn't take a whole trip. By asking each other why you want what you want, you open the door to create solutions and compromises instead of arguing and trying to win the argument. Let's say you do argue and one of you does win the argument. If the person wanting to save the money wins the argument, the other will feel resentful and less of a priority than saving money. If the person who wants a weekend getaway wins the argument, the person wanting to save money will likely argue about every little thing along the way, from what restaurants to eat in, to what hotels to stay in, etc., they will feel uncomfortable on the entire trip and ruin it for the other person too. You should never think of solvable problems as competitions you must win because when you do win them, you will not enjoy your win. You will have a resentful, unhappy, cranky, complaining partner by your side, leading to more arguments. Instead, put your thinking cap on and together with your partner, work out a solution that both of you can get behind. And whatever you do, do not drag past problems or experiences into the current situation and conversation. I know the temptation to make your point stronger will lead you to remember every single thing you've done for your partner and every single way they've wronged you. But remember Dr. Feel's words. Do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? Sometimes these are mutually exclusive. I'm really sorry to tell you that. By recognizing whether a problem is perpetual or solvable, you can approach it with the right mindset, either finding practical solutions or learning to live with it and even appreciate your partner's differences. Gottman talks about building a shared sense of meaning and Esther Perel encourages us to stay curious about our partner's process and dreams. She highlights the power of creating meaningful rituals, consistent, intentional actions that connect us as people. Rituals create stability even when life feels chaotic, she says. You can create shared meaning by checking in with each other and talking about what is important to each of you. It's sort of a macro review 
of your relationship, which you could do, let's say, once per year, once every quarter, whatever is makes sense for your particular relationship. So try asking, what kind of life do we want to build together in the next five years? Or you can ask, what are the non-negotiables for you? And then also share what the non-negotiables are for you. <laughs> Meanwhile, Esther Perel says, meaningful rituals can be very simple, but when regular, they're very effective in strengthening your relationship and keeping you on the same page. For example, you could have morning or evening check-ins. Every morning, you can ask each other, what's one thing you're excited about today? Or every evening, you can say, what's something you appreciated about me today? Kind of fishing for compliments a little bit. For example, you can also have weekly walk and talks. Pick a weekday and time to go out on a walk together and use the time to discuss any challenges or plans for the future and some good things that you've been through. I personally love this and I can tell you for a fact that it works amazingly for discussing things. Sometimes there might be a lot to talk about. Other times things just come up. Being outside, walking and talking feels natural and informal. There's less pressure, conversations meander, even the difficult ones don't feel so difficult. Or you could have a monthly disconnect day. Pick one day a month to unplug from devices and focus on each other. You can cook a meal together, try a new recipe, visit a local museum or just relax without distractions. You can go hiking, you can do so many things without your devices. If you're wondering how this is helping you navigate difficult priorities, well, easy. You are building a foundation to approach conversations about priorities comfortably and confidently, trusting each other to have each other's best interests in mind, no matter what. Building shared meaning helps you feel on the same team and act accordingly instead of acting as adversaries. Oh yeah, by the way, this is also important. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button below if you like the video so far. And let's continue. Gottman emphasizes the importance of a culture of appreciation and respect. If both partners feel respected and valued, they're more likely to approach differences with empathy and a productive mindset. This means actively listening to each other's priorities without judgment and recognizing the legitimacy of each partner's perspective. This ties into Gottman's idea of turning towards each other rather than turning away from each other. When a partner expresses a priority, the other should respond with interest and understanding rather than dismissiveness or defensiveness. Always acknowledge your partner's perspective first. Let's say your partner prioritizes spending time with friends and you feel like it takes away from your time together. Instead of criticizing, try acknowledging their feelings first, like this. I know how much your friends mean to you and I admire how you stay connected with them. That's the acknowledgement. Then express your need. I'd also love to make sure we have some quality time this weekend. Can we plan something together? <laughs> Remember what you appreciate about your partner even in moments of tension. For example, I love how passionate you are about your career. It's one of the things I admire most about you. And then maybe we can plan a vacation together two weeks from now. <laughs> this creates an atmosphere of positivity and keeps the conversations from becoming a blame game. Avoid dismissing your partner's feelings. When your partner expresses their priorities, resist the urge to minimize or dismiss them. Instead of saying, that's not important right now, try, 
I can see this really matters to you. Let's figure out how we can work this into our plans. <laughs> At the heart of aligning priorities is creating a culture of empathy, respect, and understanding in your relationship. By approaching your differences with empathy, curiosity, and collaboration mindset, you turn conflicting priorities into opportunities for new experiences and growth. Remember, communicate openly and practice respect. Understand whether a conflict is perpetual or solvable. Build shared meaning and create meaningful rituals that anchor and strengthen your relationship. That's your recipe for managing conflicting priorities. Let me know in the comments which of these ideas you're excited to try. Don't forget to like, subscribe for more relationship tips from me. And thank you for watching. See you next time.